So in the beginning, my training, so back in 19, it was very popular to leave your baby to cry, Ferber, Gina Ford, all of those. So that was how I was trained as a nanny. And in theory, it it was a very sound approach. And I went out and my first job was a lot of confidence. I'm the boss, they are manipulating me, I need to be in charge, I know what to do. But very quickly, I realised when I came to put the children to bed that it didn't feel right. I had a very gentle way of working with the children. I didn't do, when you think of a nanny, quite often you would think of somebody doing the naughty step, time out, being quite a disciplinarian. That was never ever my style of nanny. And we're rolling. Welcome to the Parenting Truths podcast. Today, I'm joined by infant sleep consultant, founder of Care It Out and mum to a 10-month-old, I think now, Kerry Secker. Thanks for joining me, Kerry. Thank you so much for having me, Tom. Really happy to be here. She's actually 13 months now. Cannot believe it. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's flown by. (laughs) Blink and you miss it. (laughs) I know. It goes very quick, doesn't it? Um, So quick. So there... And many reasons I wanted to get you on the podcast today, because I think you've had such a unique journey into parenthood. So you started out as a nanny for a long period, and then you began working with parents to help them find sort of gentle ways to navigate the little one's sleep. And then after all of that, you became a parent. So when you became a parent, you had all of this experience, and I'm keen to explore what that was like for you. Um, But should, should we start maybe way back? So maybe at the start when you sort of became a nanny and how that all started for you? Yeah, way back. Like, that is way back, like late nineties. <laughs> <laughs> scary. Oh, wow. Yeah, long time. Been doing this a long time. Um, yeah, so I trained as a nanny. And, well, I started off um, doing my NNEB um, at the time. And I didn't know what I wanted to be. But then somebody came and gave us a talk. I still remember her name, Jemima. And she made nannying sound as if it was this most glamorous thing ever. And I was like, I want to be a nanny. I was only 18. (laughs) And I was like, this is what I'm going to do. So before I'd even graduated on the back of my course, I had signed up to her agency and got my first job. Um, I was in charge of three children under five at 18. I mean, looking back now, the thought frightens me like I was still a baby myself. I had no idea what I was doing. And spoiler alert, it was not glamorous at all. But I had the best time. I absolutely loved being a nanny. And then I went on to nanny for around 17, 18 years. There was an overlap as I set up my sleep consultancy. And I worked all across the globe. I worked in Switzerland, Italy, uh, did a lot of work in um, America. And yeah, just had a a really great time. And then I found myself back in London. As I I realised that that life is great fun when you're in your 20s not so fun and hard to sustain when you're in your 30s very difficult so I ended up moving back to London and nanny's there for a little bit as well and yeah I just really 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 enjoy being a nanny great hard work great fun um but I learned so much about me um families and yeah had a blast yeah did you find that because 17 years seems like a a very long time is that common for nannies to be nannies for such a long period or were you quite unusual in, in that sense I think sense? there's definitely some old type career nannies we would call us but I think there's a lot of people that probably might nanny or au pair as a stop gap between studying um did I go in with the intention of 17 years probably not but I and it is a long time when you think about it. It's, it's a long time to do anything, but I just I, I just really enjoyed it. I was really passionate about it. Every day was different. I I couldn't imagine being in an working in an office. I don't know if I do that now, but at the time there was no way I could work um, in an office. It, it really really suited me. So I think probably there's not many people that have done it that long. But there's, I know a lot. Of, I made a lot of nanny friends, and they've done it for a long time too. And did you tend to, would you commit to a family for a prolonged period or was it different families on different day of the weeks, if you know what I mean? Or I was a bit of a long, a long timer in with my families and I did commit for a long time. I never agreed to commit up front, but right. I would always be honest that I was in it for the long haul and I would ideally like to stay with that family until they went to school like um and they didn't need a nanny anymore because I feel that 
having one primary carer in the home, I think, is a really nice way. That just worked for them, and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, but, yes, sometimes it didn't always work out, and there were shorter jobs. But I think I only had six or seven families who I'm in contact with, bar one, to this day. Oh, that's amazing. So it sounds like a very positive experience for you then, that career path. Oh, yeah. Def- I mean, there was definitely mm. some moments. I won't mention any names, but one... And we still laugh about this now through a pair of shoes at my head. Um, oh. <laughs> it was definitely a hard times. It's such a weird job because a lot of that, for seven years, I lived in as well with them, like in the little okay. nanny basement flat, granny flat next door and, and downstairs. And it, it's a really weird job because it's a really intimate job where you get to know that you become part of the family you can't do that job without getting emotionally involved and becoming part of them you're there for everything all the highs all the lows um but at the same time you're also not quite family and it's still at the end of the day it is still a job that you're doing and as i got i found that quite hard as i got older which is one of the reasons why i did leave in the end to separate the two it's really tricky yeah, because I can. Because my wife and I were fortunate; we held off on nursery with our first until he was three years old. So he was home with us for three years. And yeah, it's a, it's a weird concept to think that we'd have someone in the home with us, you know, doing the majority of parenting. So I guess for for you as a nanny, was it quite challenging? Did you ever do stuff as the nanny with the parents out and about? Like, did you have to have boundaries in place not to sort of um, sort of overpower them because you spent so much time with the children you've maybe thought you knew what they needed in specific moments or I 100% always knew my place even as a young and older nanny definitely knew my place and I first and foremost both parents were always the experts of their child I might have spent a lot of time with them and I loved them fiercely I still love all the kids that I nannied for fiercely (laughs) and in touch with them and actually one of the things when I became a parent was I was really worried about would I love my own baby as much as I loved the other children you do okay your heart just grows it was really interesting yeah remind me to come and talk about um I'll be honest about what we've done for childcare with Betsy as well um okay but yes, I used to go um, I used to go on holiday, I used to travel with them, I taught their kids to ski, to swim, just yeah, all of those things. But at the end of the day, both they were the parents, what they said would go. Many over the years we had a great relationship. We would always communicate and talk to us and you just get into you get to know each other and you just you get into a rhythm. But default would always be whatever the parents did, whatever the parents would want, that is what would happen because I would never assume that I knew those children better than the parents. That's bonkers. Right, okay. So, obviously, you started that at 18, and a lot of the things you talk about, obviously, your um, sleep consultancy is called Care It Out, is uh, focused on, you know, gentle and respectful parenting. Um, Did that sort of evolve during your period as a nanny? Did you have touch points with parents that parented that way or did you feel that kids needed to be parented that way what sort of led you down that specific route as a parent yeah that's a great question so in the beginning my training so back in 19 I can't remember when I graduated back in the late 90s it was very popular to leave your baby to cry Ferber, Gina Ford all of those so that was how I was trained as a nanny and in theory it it was a very sound approach and I went out and my first job with a lot of confidence I'm the boss they are manipulate me I need to be in charge I know what to do but very quickly I realized when I came to put the children to bed that it didn't feel right I shut the door they cried and it, I wanted to cry I think I probably did cry to be honest Tom it was horrible I it yeah. felt awful my instincts were telling me to go to them so very very quickly I turned my back on that way of um working with children and getting them to sleep back in the day when I started Instagram social media wasn't even a thing so I didn't even know hadn't even heard of gentle pairing uh, gentle pairing gentle parenting or any of these things um but I had a very gentle way of working with the children I didn't do when you think of a nanny quite often you would think of somebody doing the naughty step time out being quite a disciplinarian that yeah. was never ever my style as nanny I had that 100 I had boundaries you have to be when you're looking after a other people's children and there's a few of them so I definitely had boundaries um 
but I didn't discipline them in that sense. I was very gentle, very caring. I'm not a massive fan of labels or the word alternative, but lots of people back then thought it was strange. Other nannies didn't necessarily want to hang around with me because they thought that I was being permissive or that I wasn't doing my job properly because I wasn't putting them on the naughty step. But again, that just didn't feel anything really important to me. And instinctively, that didn't feel the best thing to do. So it took time. Um, but over a few years, I turned my back on my training. I still found it useful and it's definitely my base, but turned my back on my training, followed my instincts, realised it worked, realised that the parents that I was working with wanted an alternative approach. And that's how Carrot Out came about. Yeah, I absolutely love the name Carrot Out, by the way. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Thank you. because of the name, um, do you find yourself when you're sharing on social media, do a lot of your posts... Because I've noticed when you talk about sleep on social media, there are two camps, and often the the comments can be get can become very toxic because you know it's one camp or the other. Are there ways in which you navigate that as someone that shares on social media, or do you just ignore it, or how do you sort of navigate through that if you've Again, experienced it at all? Yeah, I have. Do you know what? I haven't experienced it as much as others probably have. Okay. Um, I have quite a thick skin. And I have where I stand on it is that I'm always very honest and upfront that sleep training, leaving them to cry, crying it out, whatever you want to call it, I've never been staunchly anti it or against it. And you'll never hear me. I'm I'm quite savvy on social media. I never really talk about that. So uh, uh, you, it's very rare that I would have the sleep training talk. I tend to focus on my tips my suggestions my support yeah. rather than that side of things and I think that probably helped but I'm not anti it I'm not against it I will always be an advocate that you are the parents are the experts of their babies yeah. they know what is right for them and I really dislike this you, how you describe it there that those two camps on one hand you've got one camp saying the only way to do it to get sleep is you've got to night wean sleep train them leave them to cry and on the other camp you've got people saying that if your um, sleep training is having an impact on them it's the wrong thing to do you're damaging your children damaging is such a big word I'm yeah. definitely more in the middle if sleep training feels like that's the best um approach for you and you totally understand what's going to happen what it's all about then you are your little one's expert however it really grinds my gears when people say that it's the only way that really like that only word and that fear around if you don't do it you're never going to sleep again I'm always honest even if you did nothing waited time did nothing made no changes didn't put a single tip in place never sleep trained your baby will eventually sleep through the night wean if you're breastfeeding wean off the breast and not need feeds at night time so always here to reassure you that waste it out works but I definitely loiter somewhere in the middle I'm not going to tell you to sleep train because that's not my bag but I'm also not going to tell you to waste it out I'm always here to reassure you and to help you find a way to make those changes in the most caring way I'll always be the advocate for that baby and to do it in a respectful and responsible responsive way if we can yeah I think the the way it's framed on social media it does feel like the cry out method is the end goal you've tried everything else and that's mm -hmm. the last resort and when you uh, and when you do it it works and I, there's a yeah I won't name names but there's a consultant doing the reins on social media that's working with celebrities um, who, mm -hmm. who are sharing about using the cry out method and when you look at them like that their story is two three months after they've stopped working with the sleep consultant they're still posting about sleepless nights and, and trying to navigate their infant sleep so it can put a lot of undue stress on parents thinking that that is the last resort when mm -hmm. you, you just do need to do what works for you and your family like my wife and I are still doing bedtime with our five-year-old we lay with him until he falls asleep that works for us I know parents with two kids who are like one and 18 months and their bedtime is take them to their bed shut the door and that's bedtime done within yeah. you know half an hour but my wife and I are happy with that sometimes you know that bedtime does drag on and it can take hours and we look at each other and think you know are we making life very difficult for ourselves? But naturally, you know, we won't always be laying with our five-year-old. So, it, it, you know, yeah. we just need to roll with it.
Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It is whatever works for you. And I think why I took to social media was to dispel some of the many myths that there are around infant sleep. I'm always here for, to be honest and realistic. And again, don't have a problem with sleep trainers to say being on um, social media it's just I wish they were just a little bit more honest about mm. what they do and honest in the fact that sleep training doesn't work for everybody it will largely um, come down to temperament and personality of your baby it's not parents go into it thinking that it, a, it's their only option but this is definitely going to work and it doesn't work for everybody so then you're left then with parents thinking that they are the biggest failure you can't fail at sleep but they feel like it, they're the biggest failure or it's their fault because not even that has worked where parenting is so personal it's, I've learned that recently parenting is so personal it's hard not to take it personally but actually it's nothing to do with what you're doing it does come down to timing essentially plays a big part in sleep temperament personality 100 percent. we can't push them to do something that they're just not physically emotionally biologically capable of doing yeah i just wish there was a little bit more honesty and i've seen a i hardly ever talk about other sleep trainers um and i'm not talking about one in particular here at all but i see it a lot where they are um, starting to use language that's becoming more popular. I think they realise actually parents are looking for a more gentle, respectful way of doing things. So I'm seeing more and more of this language creeping in, and that really grinds my gears as well. Like if you're going to be doing something, have integrity and be honest about what it's going to look like and what is, what's it, what is it going to involve, rather than getting parents to work with you and then it is just another method of con- control crying. Yeah. No, I like what you said um, a few minutes ago about working with that specific child, because there is no one solution fits all, is there? And it's not linear, like sleep, you know, will go in waves, like when they have developmental surges and things like that. Sleep might become more challenging when they get a little bit older and they're processing a lot more, you know. A little one might have a tough day at school, for example, and he, you know, he, he needs to rationalise that before he falls asleep. It's not you're not always going to sail through bedtime, and you might think you've got it nailed. I think I had it, thought I had it nailed when our little one was two and a half, because we'd go up at quarter to seven, he'd be asleep at ten past seven, and that went on for about four months. And I was like, oh, we've got this nailed, and then obviously. <laughs> A month or so later, and bedtime takes an hour and a half. <laughs> Worst thing you could do, biggest mistake parents make. You never, I'm saying this jokingly, parents never make mistakes. But the biggest mistake a parent can ever make, and I've done this myself, is tell yourself you've got it nailed because the next yeah. day just, it just all goes to shiz, 100%. Yeah. So, how, how did you go from working with parents as a nanny to setting up your own sleep business in terms of working with parents on their infant sleep oh amazing thank you yeah it took a lot of time and I made a lot of mistakes as I went along so it came about because I am a very social person and love chatting and I would meet a lot I made a lot of friends as a nanny other mums from singing groups being in the park and they started to ask me for things like how to help with tantrums, how to help with bedtime. And I, they realized that this advice worked. And then they were talking about me to their friends and then their friends would then come out. And I used to have a little queue. If I went to the park, I'd have a little queue of parents wanting to talk to me <laughs> for this advice. Um, and then I always knew that when I went into my last nanny job, that that would be my last job. I'd want to try and do something else after 18 years. Um, And they were super supportive. And as they started going to school, they said that I could work, set up my business. They'll um, have me for the out school hours, but in school hours, as long as I'd done everything around the house, I could work on the business as well. So I just decided to take that opportunity. They were amazing to, to take the opportunity and do that. And in the beginning, it was very, very slow. Again, Instagram, I don't think, came a lot later. That wasn't even a thing to try and get business, and I still laugh at it now. I printed out some terrible flyers that looked as if they were like a relic from the 90s and went round a park handing them out to parents. And then I got really upset when I walked round the park later. I spent days doing this and then realised I found them all in the bin. So that's not a great way of finding a business. But eventually... 
by being consistent and I did a lot of talks in cafes um I would just hustle really hard and just ask can I come and talk about sleep and can I share some sleep tips with your parenting group I did I used to go around music groups and um like baby groups as well to go and give a little chat at the end and in the beginning I was awful I would literally just stand up and say I'm Kerry this is Kerry Kerr I was um Kerry Kerr's parenting in the beginning I wasn't even care it out and then expected to get business so it that didn't work it took a lot of time but eventually started working one-to-one with families my confidence grew and then it just flew from there I think I've been I think care it out five six this year I've lost okay. track. I feel like I've lost a year of my life because I've been on that leave. But yeah, it's <laughs> been going for quite a while now. So from that, obviously, 17 years as a nanny, you set up Care It Out and then eventually became a parent. So did you think that you'd, ha- you'd be on top of everything as a parent? Um, was it a straightforward journey into parenthood? How, how did you sort of transition into becoming a parent? With a great big shock, I think. I think I went in with to parenting with my eyes wide open. I had worked with families for a long time. I had probably there's not much that shocked me having lived in with people with families and and working with them for a long time. So my expectations were super low. Um, so on one hand, I actually found it easier than what I thought it was going to be. It felt weird at first, to be honest. I was just like, we wait. I'll be honest, we waited a long time. My journey into motherhood was really difficult. We'd had a couple of losses um, okay. and it took eight years for Betsy to arrive, our little rainbow baby. So I think in the beginning, I think I was just so shocked. And I used to look at her and just think, my goodness is she actually mine? But then I realised that I couldn't clock off at 7pm and I was the mum, not the nanny. It genuinely felt right, like a bit yeah. like a busman's holiday to begin with. However, what I would say is that having all that experience and time working with families, like it's definitely helped. It's definitely been helpful. Um, and on the whole, I would probably say I'm quite a confident parent, but it also like the practical side of it but what I wasn't prepared for was the emotional side of it the impact it has on your relationship but also that first night home from the hospital was wild like I Mm. just did not expect that I remember sitting on the sofa with a crying baby thinking she's just not got the memo I'm a sleep consultant what's happening why is she not asleep um it was really really hard so Yes, it's definitely a bit of both, definitely a bit of both. And I think sometimes it, it works both ways in some respects. It's, it is just like being at work and being a nanny. But when it's hard, I think it really hits hard. I find myself questioning. So I can get really into my head about small things and questioning everything. Am I doing the right thing? Should I be doing this? For example, this comes back to what I was talking about before. I decided when I went back to work to put Betsy into nursery for two days because okay. I just I felt that was just the best for us. You come back to parents knowing what is best for them. And I came under quite a bit of criticism from friends and family because they were like, you're a nanny. Why are you sending her out to nursery? Your whole career was looking after other people's children. Why aren't you doing this now? But in all honesty, I don't think I could have had I would make the worst nanny boss ever because I would have a very set way. I knew how I would do it and nobody is going to do it quite like you. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's really tricky. And I always knew, I've only gone back to work two days a week, but I always knew that I did want to go back to work because I love my job and I, I think it needs, there's still a lot of work to do in changing the narrative around infant sleep. So yeah, definitely highs and lows, Tom. Yeah, I think for women in particular as well, like you say about but it's expected, you know, maternity leave for 12 months, sort of often friend groups change when you become a parent and you become sort of you enter it into a sort of different person when you become a, a parent, but a mum specifically. Did you find personally you were dealing with a lot in terms of transitioning from your sort of non-parenting life into life as a mum? I 
Yes, there was definitely, I definitely found it tricky. And I think it would come in periods, like most things with babies, like that first few weeks was really tough but then when I found my groove I just I did I actually loved it I think there's quite often two camps one that wants to go back and do the newborn all over again and mm. then the other side just like I'm so glad those days are done and um, I'm glad I had them but I'm glad they're done where I would go back and have her as a baby time and time again like I waited so long and it went so quick yeah I'm like have I soaked her in enough and I'm self-employed so um I went back to work at not, she was nine, yeah, just turned nine months. And that, that was really hard, to, a period that was really hard. I did, I knew I wanted to go back, but I kept thinking to myself, am I doing the right thing? Should I be going back to work? But she, I'm thriving at work and she's really happy at nursery now, which is great. That's it. So I guess she's getting the best of you, isn't she? As opposed to, you know, if it was a, a, a full on seven days a week with no work, I, work sort of becomes that little bit of escape, doesn't it? Yeah, no, definitely. And I, I was very, I know this is a very privileged position to be in and I'm very grateful for it. But when I had, I completely stepped away from my business for those whole nine months, I handed them over to someone else and had hardly any, I did a couple of kit, a few kit days and that was it. So I feel really grateful to be able to have given her that. I, again, there's nothing wrong with working and hustling whilst your baby naps and is around. But I felt that I just wanted to really surrender and be that time. If I was at work, I was at work. And if I'm at home, I'm at home. I try to keep them pretty separate. And that works for us. Well, nothing ever works for everybody. Yeah, and especially with everyone working. Well, everyone. A lot of people working from home these days. It is hard to have that separation, isn't it? Oh, it's so hard. And you know, you could leave the office, but go down and just be checking your emails on your phone. On your phone. Yeah. So th- yeah. Oh yeah. Lit- Terrible. Yeah. Um, just to go back and touch on what you said about um, sort of soaking up the newborn days, because my wife and I were chatting about this recently, because Mia is six and a half months old now, so it feels like she's out of those newborn days, like she breastfed with my wife this morning sort of standing up <laughs> so so the breastfeeding <laughs> Breast <aerobics. laughs> gy- yeah the breastfeeding gymnastics has started and my wife was so anxious during those newborn days because we've got two healthy little ones but she's been pregnant seven times and we had a little girl a couple of years ago that was born at five months so we were anxious through the entire pregnancy with Mia but also through the newborn days um and my wife was saying she feels like she didn't really it was just survival really through those newborn days and and we thought that trying for for a third was completely off the cards but now we're sort of having the conversations but i i I think the door's shut but you know it's (laughs) (laughs) it's not locked you never know tom you never know (laughs) um first of all i'm really sorry and sad to hear about your journey it's hard all I'm going to say it's just so hard yeah. and so tough um and totally resonate the anxiety in that in especially in the first few months it's, mm. it's high also how is she six months I know I know it's unbelievable that's just blown my mind yeah she just goes so quick we started the weaning journey now um she weaning so... really got me I'd weaned okay. lots of family lots of babies as a fam as a nanny but I was really, really worried when mm. I did it with Betsy. And that re- it's those little things that really catch you by surprise. Um, yeah, that was, weaning was really different. I found really tricky to get going. We went really slowly, but then, then I started to really enjoy it. It's a great stage, Tom. Weaning means cleaning, but it's fun. Yes. Yeah, e- every night now we just need to allow an, an extra half an hour just to tidy up the floor <laughs> yeah. and the, the high chair. <laughs> And the, the baby. Before. Yeah. But yeah, it's really hard. I totally resonate with the anxiety whilst, even start before you have your baby at birth, um, in pregnancy, and then in the first few months. In fact, I think, if I'm really honest with myself, there's probably some anxiety there still. I'm weary a year in. I'm not sure that's ever going to go away. No, no. Let's make peace with it. Um, so to transition in a way into um just having a little chat with your expert hat on if that's okay um i've just got a couple of questions sleep related so i was just intrigued whether you had sort of 
a period in a little one's life that sort of crops up time and time again for, with the parents you work with? Or does it vary completely from whoever reaches out to you? That's a great question. I think it varies because... I genuinely believe, this is a bit of a shock for my husband, he genuinely thought that every baby that was born had the same temperament and personality. Mm. So I think it was a bit of a shock when he realised that all babies were completely different. Like his ideal of a baby wasn't what we got. We got a Larry one. Um, so <laughs> I think they're all really, really different. If I've learned anything working for, with families of 20 odd years, it is they are all really different. And the, as I said before, personality and temperament definitely plays a part in it. You've got to look at everything, family logistics, pregnancy, birth, temperament, personality. So I, I, I think my answer for this one is that it will very much depend on the, the child in question because some are just good sleepers. They are just their temperament, their karma, things work, work better for them. They are just, a, they are a little bit more settled than some and on the other end of that you've got some babies that just need more so much more they need more of you more parental proximity they just need more um yeah I'm going to say it will depend on the baby I, I do that my most common age I do work with families though is probably around eight ten months probably coincides with perhaps parents going parental leave ending and perhaps yeah. thinking about going back to work um but yes that that is my answer <laughs> yeah I think when we had Mia we quickly realized that every baby is different so Luca never slept through the night until he was like 18 months old I think but um Mia seems to be able to stitch her cycles together a lot better so she's in a next to me next to us my wife's on hand with the boob should she need it through the night but she seems to be a lot more willing just to stitch those cycles together on a, on her own and if she does need the boob it's literally like on the boob then back to sleep obviously we've had ups and downs in the last six months but on the whole completely different to Luca um so yeah it's just and, and even now Luca you know you, you think he's asleep you go to leave the room and he sort of just stands up and walks around the room he's like I'm just stretching my legs and then I go back <laughs> I'll go back to sleep <laughs> love him <laughs> yeah, he's a funny one. Yeah, mind blowing how different they are. Even siblings, even twins. I was talking about this um, the other day with a family that I'm working with. They've got twins, and just how mind blowingly different they're identical twins, but how mind blowing different, mind blowingly different they are. Like oh, wow. temperament, personality, sleep needs. Like we're all really, really different. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, and then also. Are there any tips for, so, so you said you tend to get people reaching out about eight to 10 months, but any tips for new parents in those for, sort of first three months? Because they do hit you hard, don't they? And I think mm -hmm. the best thing parents can do is just try and absorb a lot of information and make sure you're setting realistic expectations. Obviously, if you expect the baby to come home and be sleeping through the night, then it's going to be very stressful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I definitely did that. And I will be honest saying that. Like, I've never expected any baby to sleep through the night, but somehow <laughs> you just get sucked into it. You, As soon as you become pregnant, your algorithm changes. So it, I was mm. bombarded with all these sleep trainers. And, and I know this sounds bonkers, being in my um, in my field um, of what I do for work, but you can't help get sucked into it. That There's so much pressure on new parents to get sleep settled and sorted, to get them in a sleep routine, to have your house tidy, to get up and make friends, to bounce back, to do all of these things. But the reality is, again, I think every birth recovery is different. So I think a lot of what happens in the fourth trimester will, will come down to that. But I think ultimately, I think sleep advice would be take off that pressure that your baby, your brand new baby, has to come home from hospital and sleep straight away it mm. is normal for your brand new brand new baby to want to be near you to cry when you put them down um we can't teach them to become independent independence comes from being dependent first and having that closeness and it's hard when you've just given birth and all you want to do is sit and eat your burger in peace and you've got this writhing little one on your chest it's so hard you're absolutely exhausted I now understand why they call it labor it's so hard and 
I think the key thing is to let go of all expectations, to go in with it that the, the first three months is a bit of a free for all. There are no bad habits to be made at any age, but in the first three months, if you're looking for practical tips when it comes to sleep, my suggestion would be not to worry about getting into a nap routine. because That's really difficult when your brand new baby is born naturally nocturnal. All babies are born naturally nocturnal because during the day, your movements would soothe them to sleep. And then at night, calm, quiet, they would wake up. Yeah. Um, and then during the day, keep it loud, bright, keep the curtains open. I'd even have them nap during the day. Um in the light if you can if you've got a really alert energetic inquisitive baby you might find that they find it difficult to fall asleep with the the curtains open so you can close the curtains to get them to sleep but then open them again once they are asleep and I think my biggest tip would be try not to tiptoe around them as well so much is like quiet the baby's sleeping but actually they quite like lots of noise they find it quite comforting and also if it is really quiet and then all of a sudden um they hear a noise that can startle them things like using movement a sling keeping your baby a sling in those first three weeks was a i don't know about you tom was yeah. one, it was a savior for both me and my husband because she could be just strapped up pretty much strapped onto one of us at all times Absolutely, but we yeah. could still go and make a cup of coffee or you know I felt like I could potter around if I wanted to sometimes I just sat there and watched Netflix whatever you needed to do and then at night time we want to do the opposite so during the day we want to keep it loud bright light keep up everyday bus- the bustle to help them um, shift their day um, and night times the right way around and then at night, we want to do the opposite, keep it calm and dark as quiet as possible. My husband definitely didn't get this memo in the beginning and would go in all singing, all dancing at 2 a.m. I was like, you just need to dial it back a bit because she thinks it's daytime. Um, but keep the curtain, keep the lights low. If you need a light, I highly recommend just using a little um, orange or amber light, um, little night light. If you need a bit of light on the situation, helpful definitely in those first three months. If you, it's always okay to meet their needs at night time. Needs don't stop by a certain age. I meant to say earlier, Tom, that it is totally normal for an 18-month-old not to be sleeping through the night. We've yeah. just got so much expectation from sleep training culture and society that they should be sleeping through the night at six months. It's madness. Um, but keep it calm. Keep it quiet. Always okay to go to them. It's always okay to make eye contact with them. It's always okay. It feels madness to me that I'm having to tell parents this is always okay pick your baby up if they're crying at night but we want to try and keep it on the down low so hushed voices light low if you need to change their nappy my biggest tip would be two tips would be to only do it if it it's clear that it's really super heavy because nappies these days are very good at wicking the wee away and if you do or and it's or it's a poo but if you do need to change i'd do it before a feed so that the feed can help settle them afterwards and then very gradually over time all by themselves around eight to ten weeks your baby will start to learn the difference between day and night and then if you wanted to work on to getting some kind of structural routine i'll be honest i'm not a very strict routine led person both Probably more professionally, I would probably be a bit more about structure. But as a parenting, I'm definitely very loose when it comes to structure and routine. I'm definitely more let's just roll with it rather than routine. But if you want a routine, because again, nothing ever works for everybody, then around eight to ten weeks is that time you want to do that. You could start a really gentle bedtime routine. It's bringing it all back to me now, Tom. I'm getting broody. Maybe that door isn't shut for me either. Um, but a bedtime routine from the from the get go, we did a, a really simple routine from the get go. Close curtains, change nappy, sing a little song, get them into their pajamas, feed, and then sleep. And then, honestly, I know it sounds bonkers, but they will get there in their own time. It's not about pushing them. It's just about very slowly setting a good, um, the best environment for sleep, meeting their needs. I think it's so important that there's a lot of advice out there on you've got to push them to self-settle or self-soothe. Babies can't self-settle or self-soothe. It's impossible. They need to be part of their brain wired to do that. Um, So we're asking them to do something that's wild. They're just not capable of doing that. But by um, keeping them calm, meeting their needs, being as calm as yourself as possible. Like if we start getting riled up, which is really natural when your baby cries, it just goes right through you. 
we start to become dysregulated, they become dysregulated. Sleep is very hard to come by. So I think those little tips about day and night and that routine, keep yourselves calm, uh, as, focus on finding your calm if you can, focus on everybody, everybody being as regulated as possible, and then that sleep will eventually come. Yeah, I think that's important because it's easy for parents to get frustrated when you've been waiting all day just for a bit of chill time and you think the baby's, mm-hmm. you know, drifted off, they fall into sleep, you you settle down to have a bit of you time and then you have to start it all over again because they've started out of sleep and they need to be settled. And I've spoken to a lot of parents that do, it, you know, it can be frustrating, can't it? Yeah, really. And I think uh, this is one thing that I did not expect as a parent and I don't get it very often but the rage the mum oh I remember you sharing about that yeah that was a good Uh, post and it was really hard for me to share that because Mm. I am naturally a very calm and chilled person there's not much that gets me riled up um and I'm quite good at surrendering like just this is it this is what's happened and just surrendering to it but there were periods when that rage is all consuming when you're up again for like the 12th time in a night and you've just got back into bed and they're up again when you just want to go and cook dinner or sit down or do a bit of admin to talk to your partner and you your baby starts crying again of course you love your children and of course you're going to go to them but it does not take away that rage and that rage really surprised me because hardly anybody talks about it hence no. was the post yeah, it's, it's one of the first posts I've I've seen about it, actually. But it, it was relatable in as much as, you know, 3 a.m. when I, I remember one of the early days with Mia, I think both me and Laura, because we were trying to do everything together. And then we started working in shifts so one person could get sleep. You know, the, the routine of settling down, waking up, boob, burp in those early days went on the entire night mm-hmm. so I don't think either of us actually closed our eyes for any point and then 6 a.m came Luca come running in the room and then you've got to start the day you know that I don't think any person can stay sane uh having no. that night after night no and there's just and then it's that one thing small tiny thing that probably wouldn't normally bother you before that just sets you off for me it was when my husband uh, he'd been out for a run and he messaged me to say, I'm just popping to Waitrose. And I realised how ridiculously middle class <laughs> that makes a sound. Um, it's the nearest shop. And it really got me. A, that he could just nip anywhere. I couldn't mm. just, if I wanted to nip somewhere, Tom, I would have to make sure the baby was okay, make sure that Matt was around. And it felt like, in the, especially in the beginning, like all of these different things that I had to orchestrate. And that he was out of the house and just on a whim, he could just nip to Waitrose to pick up yeah. what he wanted. And it obviously still bothers me because I still, it was, well, a year ago, and it still bothers me that he could do that. He just, and he didn't understand why I was cross either. Like the husband hate when you've had a baby, it is real, was not expecting that either. Yeah, well, me and Laura have had similar conversations because at the moment she can't really be away from Mia for more than like two hours. So she tried to get her hair cut the other day. I needed to actually take Mia in halfway through the haircut for a feed. And it's just, I think it it can get too much and you end up feel feeling, you know, touched out and mm-hmm. like there's no you time at all. And um, I work from home, but I went into the office. <laughs> so obviously that was me having that time in the car, listening to a podcast, just being able to get a coffee on my own, yeah. sitting down, drinking it in peace. So, uh, yeah, we've had that chat. Yeah, it's hard. I think it's a very common chat, to be honest. And <laughs> my husband is amazing. He's a great father. and We can chat about these things, but I still don't think he gets it. His time when he's, he is at work is his. I'm at work mm. and I'm still thinking... Ooh, what are we going to do for dinner? What am I going to do for bed? What's going to happen tomorrow morning? It's just it's, it's just different. And yeah, that whole thing about needing me time, again, that was, I'd forgotten about that, but that's something I really struggled with. I'm somebody that even in my marriage and friendship, I need a lot of space. I'm somebody right. who needs a lot of downtime to just function and be in a, mentally in a good place. And when you have a baby... There is no me time. You're constantly thinking about them. And even when you're not with them, you're then looking at photos and videos. Like only last night I got caught up looking at videos of her as a newborn. I'm like, just go and do something. You've wanted this me time. 
or trying mm. to do, I hate the phrase me time, but go and do something for you. But instead, I just ate chocolate and looked at videos of her, looking cute <laughs> as a newborn. Yeah, I'm sure that's very common. Yeah, it must be. Please tell me I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> So um, to close out each episode, I've been asking my guests three quick fire questions, um, but it's becoming quite apparent. I'm not sure how quick fire they are, so I might change them up, but we'll see how we get on. Um, so question one is knowing what you know now, what parenting advice would you give yourself before you became a parent? I would say that it is completely normal for them not to sleep that first couple of nights from hospital just to yeah. accept that that first night couple of nights home from hospital it's going to be hard and give yourself grace definitely yeah. be patient with yourself cool mia's middle name actually is grace for that reason because um Aww. me and laura last year were very much like you know we need to start giving ourselves some grace so we went with that name that's beautiful it's very hard when you're in a situation to be patient with yourself mm. especially if your journey into parenthood has not been straightforward yeah i really like that yeah. beautiful and then question two what's the one thing you feel you need to work on personally as a parent <laughs> <laughs> i think i need to like my husband a bit more I right okay to this. <laughs> i think if i had to i think i would probably stand by that answer i think it is yeah. just to work on being able to communicate a bit more and remember that my husband is not a mind reader he can't understand what is going through my head or the many steps ahead that I am so yeah I think my to answer that question I think it would be to I need to work on communication a bit more yeah cool and then what's the best thing so far you've found about being a parent oh can I be that person that answers just everything like I've literally yeah. really enjoyed it no that's really lame let me think of one best thing <laughs> okay the, the best thing was when she started rolling I had seen so many p babies roll in my time as a nanny so many and again that was one thing I was really worried about becoming a parent would I still find that joy with my own baby would it be yeah. the same would it be that special I can concur it definitely is because the first time she rolled over I nearly cried and I don't know whether I get more joy out of watching her develop I mean we've moved on from rolling now she's practically walking I either watching her or watching my husband watch her and the delight yeah. it, it 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 she brings him it's amazing yeah those milestones in those in that well e even now when luke luke is in school just seeing him you know being able to read sentences and stuff is unbelievable but in they hit quite hard in those early days when they even smile for the first time and you know catch your gaze and then get start engaging with you they're all quite amazing aren't they no they are the first time she waved i literally oh. <laughs> i screamed so loudly i think i scared her it's an amazing that she ever waved again but yeah i am that person that gets parent that gets very excited when they hit a milestone and that was a surprise <laughs> yeah okay well thank you for your time Kerry there's so much um important information in that um conversation I can't wait to get it out to my followers and um amazing well thank you so much for having me Tom that's okay thank you very much for your time you're very welcome bye cheers bye